The Bible has a view of time that sees six 24-hour days go by, from the creation of the universe to the creation of the soul of Adam. We look as scientists and see 15 billion years. But there's a difference in how we see time. We live today and we look back in time. We get information either from fossils or out into, out into space. And we, and we, from our 1997 or present view of time, are looking back in time. The Talmud, 1,500 years ago. Now, the Talmud is a Jewish commentary. It's a commentary on the, on, on, the, on the five books of Moses. Yeah, it's, a straight, it's, it's probably one of the oldest of commentaries written on. It's, it was written down 1,500 years ago. So it was long before science. So there's no attempt of saying, well, it was trying to bend the Bible to match science, nor new science 1,500 years ago. Okay. But it points out something interesting. It says that the Bible sees time looking forward from the beginning. And it learns that from the fact that how the days are numbered. The days are numbered one by one. There's evening and morning day one, evening and morning a second day, third day, fourth day. This is a change, Zola, from one to second to third, from, from the absolute value of one to the comparative, second, third, fourth. Why day one, we're asked? Day one, day one we're asked to have so that we can see that the Bible is seeing time from the beginning, uh -huh. looking forward when there was no other time. If the Bible was seeing time from, let's say, from Adam, well, it wouldn't have said day one, it would have said a first day, because it already had the six days. Looking with the, back, of course, right. looking back. But it says day one because it sees time looking forward. So you can say, so, the Bible sees time looking forward, we see time looking back. So what? So what? So comes along Albert Einstein of the laws of relativity and says, you know what? Your perspective of time determines exactly how much time you'll, you'll see go by. We look back in time, 15 billion years from the beginning. The Bible looks forward in time. There is evening and morning, day one. And Albert Einstein and the laws of physics and the physics textbooks that are used today around the world give us the number, the ratio between seeing time looking forward, seeing time looking back. And that ratio, Zola, happens to be, it's an amazing, I just lifted the number, it's not me, it's not Schroeder, it's not religion, it's straight relativistic physics that you don't have to do the calculation, it's in the textbook. The ratio between our view of time and time looking forward is a million times a million, that's the one with 12 zeros after. It means that what, what, what the Bible would see as a day looking forward, we would see as a million million days looking back. What the Bible sees as six days looking forward, we see as six million million days looking back. Well, Zola, six million million days divided comes out to happen, happens to be 15 billion years. The Bible sees six days, we would see those six days as six million million days. Divide that by 365, and you get 15 and three quarter billion years, exactly the estimate of the age of the universe today. The six days of Genesis are 24 hours each, as measured by a watch, as we would see it, and they are made of hours and seconds as we know them, but they include all the ages of the universe as we see the ages of the universe. Now, so when I read a text, when I do my calculations and I publish a paper and say, well, the universe is 15 and a half or so billion years old, there's a second half of the sentence I never bother saying. The universe is 15 and a half billion years old from our space-time reference point. Every cosmologist knows this. You just don't bother saying it. And the moment you change reference points, the, anything is up for grabs, and the Bible gives us the reference, looking forward from the beginning, and the numbers are there. The ratio of time is in physics textbooks literally around the world, reviewed literature. This is a trilobite. It's the first of the insects. It's 500 million years old, which puts it right smack dab in the middle of day five. 24-hour uh -huh. day five. I mean, that clear. I always emphasize it. Okay. Smack dab in the middle. It's the Cambrian explosion. Now, the trilobite is the first of the insects. Along with the trilobite were sponges and mollusks, crabs and, and worms and chordata and etc. All, all the basic body plans. Now this trilobite is not perfect. It's been reconstructed. It was bitten off. Uh -huh. yeah. 500 million years ago, they were mouths. You understand? It was bitten off. Yes. But one of the eyes remains. Yes. Now the eye in this is not a perfect fossil, the perfect ones are in the, in the museums. The perfect fossils, you can actually test the curvature of the multiple lenses of the insect eye. They're optically perfect. Uh -huh. What this means is in the fossil record below this, older than this, earlier than, earlier than that, 
early, in, early into the beginning of day five, or once on day four and going back to day three where life first appears, are one-celled creatures, bacteria, algae, the stuff that makes water green, protozoans, the things you see in high school under a microscope that has a little circle with little hair coming out, it swims across the field, one-celled creatures, and then explodes into life things like this trilobite with eyes, with jointed limbs, with intestines, with gills, from where? From algae? A sudden jump. From bacteria? Huh? Yeah. If one an explosion that, that Darwin never thought that this, it was even, even into the, well into the 1900s, 1950s, 1960s, it was thought that, okay, we knew about these, but we find other fossils leading up to it earlier. No, what's been found earlier than this remains all the same, one-celled life. It's a question that, as I say, the real problem with, with evolution is the fossil record, it's not the Bible. The Bible says the following in days five and day six. In the whole six sentences, that's all it gives is six sentences of evolution. First comes aquatic animals, then comes land animals, then comes mammals, then comes people. That's the origin in the, in the Bible. That's the origin of the fossil, that's the order in the fossil record as well. The difficulty is how you go from one to the other. And randomness doesn't work. Random reactions don't seem possible to have done it. The laws of nature must be somehow, even from a secular point of view, from a secular point of view, the laws of nature have shown life to be channeled, directed. It's so obvious. I mean, the, the two views of time, the laws of relativity, if you've worked in physics, it just, I mean, it just leaps out of, off the page at you. But I am pleased about having finally seen how the each day maps. And that, that I bring in the science of God, the, uh, the new book. The next. That now understanding finally the exact relationship, we can see how long each day is. They're not of equal length. They get exponentially shorter, starting with 8 billion years, 4 billion to 1. The numbers flow exactly from the physics textbooks. They're not my numbers. That's what's so beautiful. And when you look at the biblical description of what the Bible says happens on each day, and you compare it to cosmology, paleontology, the fossil record, finally archaeology, it matches day by day. I'm not bending the data, Zola. I promise you, the match is phenomenal.